in the last few lessons, we've very much been focused on sorting data. So now it's time to move on to another really important analysis tool in Excel, and that is filtering our data. And sorting and filtering are two entirely different things. As you've seen, when we sort our data either by one column or multiple columns, it just rearranges the way that these records are displayed, making them easier to read. Whereas when we filter data, we're actually hiding records that don't meet the criteria that we've specified, enabling us to focus on exactly what we're most interested in. Now, a couple of things to note about filtering before we begin. If you recall, we put this data set into a table. And by default, when you turn your data into an Excel table, it's going to apply these filter drop downs to the column headings. So if you can see these, then you're pretty much ready to get started with filtering your data set. But what if you don't have these in your data? What if your data isn't in a table? So I'm quickly going to take this data out of a table and show you how you can apply these filter drop downs without necessarily having to convert your data to an Excel table. And this is another quick tip that is definitely worth covering because this might be something that you do want to do in the future. If you have your data in an Excel table, and you want to just convert it back to a regular range, all you need to do is jump up to the table design ribbon and in the tools group, we have a convert to range button. So if I do this, it's gonna say, do you want to convert the table to a normal range? We're gonna say yes. And now it's no longer in a table. Notice that when I click inside the data, I no longer have access to the table design ribbon. So we're back to this just being a regular range. But also notice that when I took this data out of the table, it removed those filter drop downs from the heading row. So if I now want to filter this data set, what I can do is make sure that I'm clicked in the heading row, go up to the data tab, and in the sort and filter group, we have a filter button just here. If I click this, that's going to bring those filter drop downs back. Worth noting, it hasn't put it back into a table, it's just adding those filters. So once we have our filters applied, we can then go in and start filtering our data. So maybe I am the head of the IT team. So I'm only really interested in employees that work in the IT team. So what I could do is I could remove all of the records that aren't related to IT and just see those employees that work for me. So I'm going to go to the department column. I'm going to click the filter drop down just here and notice right at the bottom, we have a list of every unique item that is in this column. So we've got finance, HR, IT, so on and so forth. Now notice that all of these checkboxes are selected because I'm displaying all records. But if I only wanted to see people who are in the IT team, I could choose select all to deselect everything and select IT only. So once I've specified that piece of criteria, when I click on OK, it's going to filter the list and notice what it's done. Now it looks like it's deleted those rows. It hasn't, it has simply hidden them from view. How do we know that they're hidden? Well, cast your eyes over to where we have our row numbers. Can you see that some of the row numbers are now showing in blue and they're no longer consecutive? So we have one, two, three, then it jumps to six, seven, then it jumps all the way to 16, 17, then it jumps to 24. So basically we can see the row numbers that it's hidden. Now you can apply filters to multiple columns. So I've got this filtered list, it's filtered by the IT department, but maybe now I want to see just the employees in the IT department who have a job rating of four. Hi, from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. So I can go to the job rating column and I can do exactly the same thing. I can deselect everything and just choose four. Click on OK and it's refined that list down even further. Now, what about if I want to filter this list even more? Maybe I'm only interested in seeing all of the employees in the IT department with a job rating of four who have the word software in their job title. 
Now you can see here at a glance, we have two people, software engineer and software developer. So they don't have exactly the same job title, but both of their job titles contain the word software. So how could we go about filtering this? Well, if we click the drop down, we can't do it from these checkboxes. But what we can do is go to text filters, and then we have a few different filters that we can apply. So I could say here begins with, and then I could type the word software, click on OK. And now I've refined my list just down to the two people that I'm interested in. Notice that wherever I have a filter applied to the column, we have a filter icon in that filter drop down list at the top of the column. So I can see very clearly which columns have filters applied. Now, once you have your filters applied and your data set refined, if you want to clear those filters, you can clear them from individual columns. So maybe I want to clear it from the job title column. I can click the drop down clear filter from job title. Now it's going to clear the filter from that column only if we use the drop down arrow. If I want to clear all filters, I would need to go up to the data tab into the sort and filter group and click on the clear button. That's going to remove any filter I have applied and put everything back to how it was originally. Let's take a look at another way to filter. Maybe this time I want to filter for everybody who has a salary over 65,000. So I'm going to click the salary column drop down. We're going to go to number filters. And again, we can choose one of these options. Now I want to filter for everybody with a salary of over 65,000, but I also want to include anyone with a salary of exactly 65,000. So I'm going to choose greater than or equal to. And we're just going to type in 65,000 and click on OK. And you can see it's refined that list down. Let's clear that filter. So there's lots of different filters that you can play around with in here. I'm going to show you one more because I think this is pretty cool. Sometimes maybe you only want to see the top five employees by salary. If we want to do that, we can use something called the top 10 filter. And this is useful for many different kinds of data set. For example, if you had a data set that maybe contained sales information, you might want to see who the top five sales agents were for the month. This is where you could utilize a top 10 filter. Now we're going to do it by salary. We're going to see the top five people by the salary amount. So let's click the salary drop down. We're going to go to number filters and notice towards the bottom we have top 10. Now, even though it's called top 10, you can refine this. So if I only want to see the top five items, I can click on OK. And you can see now it's just showing me those. Now, you might be wondering, how did it do that? Because it didn't ask us to select which column to filter by. Well, that's because I was clicked in the salary column. So it's going to apply that filter to whichever column you're currently clicked in. Once again, we can click the clear button to remove that filter. So those are the different methods that you have when it comes to filtering data. You can utilize these checkboxes on one or more columns, or you can use the text and number filters if you need to get a little bit more granular. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.